Good morning, everyone. This is Deb Wilkinson, and this webinar is being pre-recorded, and uh, it is the webinar that would normally have taken place on Thursday, April 12th. I do thank you for your patience as uh, we work through some of these scheduling issues, uh, and, and I thank you for taking the time to join in. There is a lot to discuss this week, and I just knew that it was so important to make sure that you had this information, exciting news. Uh, in my opinion, so that, you know, again, you can um, be that resource for your clients. My name is Deb Wilkinson. I'm the Vice President of the Health Plan Options Department here at URL Insurance Group. And uh, we've been running these webinars for, well, since August of 2013. So quite some time. And, uh, you know, there are just as many issues and just as many changes going on now as there was back in uh, August of 13 in anticipation of 2014's uh, launch into the ACA. So, um, again, I, I think it's important that you join in and I appreciate that you do. So, obviously, since it's being pre recorded, there will be no questions today, but uh, certainly if you have any questions on anything you hear on this recording, please just uh, shoot me an email and I am happy to answer your questions. So let's talk about uh, some of the new uh, things coming out uh, in this administration relative to health insurance. Some exciting news was released uh, from CMS on Monday, and uh, some of those provisions include a lot of things that are near and dear to all of our hearts and uh, will make our lives much easier. First things first, grandmothering provisions, the plan extensions of grandmothered plans. You know, if you like your plan, you can keep it. Uh, that is a grandmothered plan. Um, they were set to expire, or that extension was set to expire on 1231 of 18. It has now been pushed to 1231 of 19. So, as you can imagine, uh, for the carriers that still have grandmother grandmothered plans, um, they are that's healthy business to them, um, and the carriers want to hang on to those. So, uh, it, it's very important. For, plus. Your clients that have grandmothered plans uh, have another year of reprieve until they have to jump into the much higher uh, rated ACA plan. So that's a, a great uh, occurrence from Monday. Also, the medical loss ratio currently set for 80% for individuals and small groups and 85% for large groups. Um, carriers, uh, I'm sorry, states, and carriers are able to lower that MLR if they can prove that by lowering the threshold, they can create stability specifically to the individual market. But again, this is huge. If you remember, you know, 80% or 80 cents of every dollar on the individual and small group has to be spent for claims and it has to be proven. And then, you know, of course, the 20% goes for administration, commissions, everything else, which, uh, you know, is really a lot of the reason we've been squeezed out of the market. But with this opportunity, I think, uh, you know, some things are, are going to open up for us and, and only time will tell. I know that through PayWho, um, their lobbying group, they are reaching out to the Commonwealth and to find out, uh, you know, what their take is and what they can anticipate from, from uh, Pennsylvania with these new provisions. Essential health benefits benchmark plans, this is also huge. Carriers currently um, can choose, I'm sorry, states can currently select their benchmark plans from about a menu of 10 options. The final rule that came out on, on Monday is that, that a care, I'm sorry, a state can select any benchmark plan of some of the 50 plans that were previously used. So clearly, uh, there are different things that could be selected. Essential health benefits could change. But again, it's, it's really based on what our state uh, insurance commissioner and governor decide that they want to do. Um, additional 2017 hardship exemptions for individuals. And some of those include um, uh, for, I'm sorry, let me get my notes here. Some of those provisions include they could get an exemption from the, the individual tax penalty if there's only one plan in their county or if the plans that are available in their counties cover abortions and they're 
you know, due to their religious belief, they are against it. Um, so let me see. Uh, special, uh, there are some if they need specialty care as opposed to what's offered in the marketplace. But again, these are exemptions for the individual market for 2018. Uh, because in 2019, the individual tax penalty will be going away. And then also um, consumer subsidies uh, for states that haven't expanded Medicaid, there's that 100 to 133 percent where they're neither subsidy eligible or Medicaid eligible. So um, it, that's going to change for states that have not expanded Medicaid. So again, <coughs> pardon me, some of these provisions I think are are going to really have some teeth to it and make an impact. But um, as always, I will keep watching it closely and I'll let you know uh, what our state's take on all of it is. So we talked a lot in the last several weeks about Iowa and how they wanted to have a non-ACA plan and then that was shot down. Well, Iowa Governor uh, Kim Reynolds just signed into law allowing their state to so non-ACA plans, um, and it's through the Farm Bureau Association and Wellmark Blue Cross, but it looks like it's really um, on the association plan chassis. We'll see how it works, but uh, <coughs> pardon me, these plans um, would not have to be ACA compliant and uh, would, in theory, be less expensive. So we'll see how Iowa, Iowa makes out um, and what they're offering. A small victory for Georgia. Many of you read it, I'm sure. But Georgia commissions, there was a bill signed into law last week that requires the carriers to pay the commissions that were filed with their, their rate. Um, the dollar amount of commissions was not mandated, and that's a good thing. We don't want the government saying you can make X amount of dollars, no more, no less. Um, that's a slippery slope, of course. Um, and then, of course, one of the provisions is that the carriers do not need to pay com uh, compensation commissions through the special election period. So it's a small victory, <coughs> pardon me, but um, at least there's something on the books that, that uh, you know, protects agents, which is certainly important to all of us. Um, CMS is to wind down the federal exchanges by 2020, but only if Congress passes an ACA repeal. Well, you know, no one's banking on that. Funds would shift to the states as well as support of the site. So I put in there question marks about is it a pipe dream? Yeah, I think it's a pipe dream. But um, CMS detailed in its fiscal year 2019 budget that there's a 400 and $3 million cut to its program operations budget next year, which is um, for the federal exchanges and um, the support thereof. So that's kind of interesting. Those are real dollars, whether it's a, a repeal, the ACA is repealed or not, um, you know, those are real dollars that will have a, an effect somehow. Uh, so we'll keep watching that to see what, what's going on there. There are a couple bills in um, our Commonwealth that are of interest. Senate Bill 630, sponsored by Senator Guy Reschenslater. Um, it's going to allow unlicensed sale of travel insurance. And then House Bill 504, uh, sponsored by Rep Representative Alexander Charlton, um, would permit unlicensed staff working for self-storage units to sell contents property insurance. Now this is definitely a slippery slope. <clears throat> um, you know, what other lines of insurance would the Commonwealth or our Congress, uh, you know, a state legislature um, feel that, that you know, we, we could, um, you know, could be sold if you're not licensed. So again, I think it's really slippery that Unlicensed entities are given the, the you know, go forth and conquer, sell these programs. Um, you know, it, licensing is not to be um, discounted, of course. You know, it's, it's an important uh, certification to have. And um, we work hard for those licenses. So to have the state come in and support unlicensed entities selling any line of insurance, uh, I'd say it's a slippery slope. And if you have interest in, in, in interest in fighting that, 
and you are from Washington, Allegheny County um, for the Senate bill or Delaware County for the, um, the House bill, you may want to reach out to those representatives and, and let them know your concerns. More mergers. Can't go by without a week of any potential mergers. Wellspan and Summit Healthy, Summit Health merger, not healthy merger, excuse me. Um, so the, the two systems based in York and Chambersburg said they have signed a non-binding document outlining a permanent agreement. And uh, the hospitals, both Wellspan and Summit are nonprofits. Uh, Summit Health includes hospitals in Chambersburg and Waynesboro, and of course, Wellspan is the parent hospital of a parent of York Hospital. So, more to watch there. And then, of course, we just heard about um, Wellspan and I'm sorry, Walmart and Humana possibly merging. And of course, you know, Walmart does a lot of those senior appointments in their in their um, their, their stores. So this is kind of their launch into getting, I guess, money for selling to the seniors within their store. Um, more to follow on that, but it's it's kind of interesting how these mergers with these reta retail shops are, are popping up trying to sell insurance. Um, so let's move on. Upcoming events of interest, April 24th at 9.30 uh, webinar is being run for Medicare offerings on running Medicare appointments for beginners. So if you're not in the Medi Medicare market, you have an interest of dipping your toes in, that's probably a great introduction for you. Also May 16th at 2 p.m., uh, we're sponsoring a webinar from Sun Life on generating new revenue from voluntary benefits. They're also gonna talk about absence management. And then May 23rd at 2 p.m., uh, we are also sponsoring a webinar with Highmark. Um, they're gonna go over their third and fourth quarter changes, exciting changes, and um, you know, uh, something to look forward to for 2019, maybe uh, get a gauge on what they're anticipating for 2019. So join us if you can. Uh, those invitations are in my newsletter, which will be going out, or at this point, you would have already received. Uh, they go out Thursday around 10 o'clock. So, Highmark. Highmark Central, Western, and Northeast. The annual employee count forms have been sent out. They are being sent out to all active medical and drug coverage groups that um, had coverage in 2017. And those forms need to be completed and sent back no later than uh, 420 of 2018. I apologize for that typo there, but that is next Friday. Aetna AFA, which is available to employers 5 to 50, they have a new submission procedure with 5-1 effective date. So if you're not aware of that, please reach out to your new business specialist and find out about that. Um, there's also information, <coughs> pardon me, in our web, um, my newsletter about the submission process. And of course, just released is with Aetna new FAA, AFA um, uh, reports are now available on the employer website and they are um, really utilization reports, which I think is, is excellent for the self-funding market. New business uh, carrier deadlines, there's a form in the HDR newsletter. Uh, Katrina put together a great uh, really roadmap of each carrier and what to expect for renewals and new business uh, deadlines. And that's really it. Um, clearly there's no open discussion today as I have no attendees. I am talking to myself in the cyberspace. Um, but again, I, I appreciate you certainly joining in and taking the time to at least listen to the recorded version. And I will be back live here on Thursday, April 19th. Um, I apologize for the last two weeks of um, you know, the, the reschedules, um, and I, I appreciate your flexibility with that. As always, if you have questions, my contact information is here. Uh, reach out to me either via phone or email, debw at urlinsgroup.com. And uh, as always, I thank you so much for joining in, and I wish you all a great weekend and a balance of the week. Bye-bye.